Hey, what's up? Kalen here. Uh, in this video, I wanted to talk about um, one of the strategies that you can use around um, going from freelance to uh, having a small agency. I um, just did a great live stream with my buddy Mark uh, Lewis. Agency is called Natalico if you want to check it out. And um, he really, I think, has, um, you know, I deal with a lot of different agencies. Some are, you know, trying to grow more aggressively than others. Others are growing nice and, and gradually and sort of, sort of optimizing for overall sanity with, you know, running, running an agency can be a tough business. You've got client deadlines. You've got, uh, you're juggling lots of different, you know, things with your team and, and managing resources, trying to keep everyone busy. And I thought he had some, some great nuggets. And, um, <clears throat> Not those kind of nuggets, uh, although I'm sure yeah, there his nuggets are fine. Okay, uh, <laughs> but so um, what the idea what the idea was is when you're going from uh, freelance to building a, building a team, maybe you start subcontracting. Um, what I think maybe the way some people approach it is they get a big let's say you get a big project and it's too much for you to handle, so you got I got to bring somebody on um, to help me handle this project. Um, I think that's a very high risk way to um, approach um, beginning to subcontract because, um, first of all, if it's a project you can't handle on your own, um, you know that is a risk right there in and of itself. Um, and then secondly, you're starting to work with somebody new. Let's say you've never subcontracted before, or, you, or you've done a little bit of it, but haven't really done a lot of it. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that can kind of go wrong there. Um, with Commerce Hero, obviously, we try to mitigate that by by connecting you know people with with quality developers um, but but you know there's still going to be risk in, inherent in that um, and so you've never worked with them before you got to figure out that working relationship there's personalities there's the, how well does their skill set match up with what your uh, what the project is there's maybe the require you know how good are the requirements um, the client what if the client's crazy what if requirements change so there's a lot of things that can that can go wrong there. And Mark's approach to it, which I thought was really smart, was um, instead of you know bringing somebody on to, to help you with this big project, um, start to as a as a freelancer, um, start to get, uh, basically convert your workload into being very stable, um, very um, uh, re, you know sort of repeatable. So you're taking your um, you know, clients and, and try to turn them into like retainer clients so that you're doing a fixed amount of hourly work every month. Um, and, and just even out that workflow, uh, that workload, um, so that then it's so much easier to bring a subcontractor into that, uh, in a way that, that minimizes risk. Um, and you know, you don't have so many things to juggle all at once. So let's say that, um, you know, you want to get out of that kind of feast famine uh, cycle a little bit so that, you know, you've got, let's say you've got, you know, five, six clients that are giving you steady work, 10, 15 hours a month, whatever it is, uh, you're nice and busy. Um, and then that allows you to bring somebody in, in a way that if they don't work out, um, it's not going to make or break this major project with a major deadline and things like that. It's like, hey, bring somebody in for 10 hours to work on some retainer work that can get done you know, anytime this month. Um, it's not super urgent. And by the way, if they don't work out, it's going to be very easy for you to go in and let's say do the work yourself. Um, because again, this is just nice um, maintenance type retainer work um, that it, do isn't, it doesn't have a real urgent deadline on it. Um, so I think that's a great way to do it. In other words, it, when you're thinking about becoming a small agency, try to even out your workload as a freelancer first, um, before you do that. I think that's a great way to kind of lay the groundwork, um, so that, you know, to minimize the madness once you start getting into the game of being an agency, which is now, You've got a team of people. You got to manage them. You got to keep them busy. You got to deal with them making mistakes. You know, there's a lot of things that that can go wrong, and if you can minimize the number of things that can go wrong as much as possible, um, that's really going to help you. Uh, you know, I think that's really going to going to help you out. So, hope that's helpful. Um, let me know what you think. Agree, disagree. Post in the comments. Questions. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, thanks so much for watching.